to get behind the wheel But only one rider, I just feel Got me swimming like a diver Take let go, I got fans in Okinawa My heart's in Japan, quick losers and all right, welcome to this extra episode in Chapter 7. And this is an episode I'm just going to call Stuff I Forgot. Because in the previous 13 episodes, I just forgot to cover this stuff. So I made up this real short video to cover just a couple of the odds and ends that, you know, just weren't put in there before. And also, this is very special because it's episode number 100 of the screen cla screencast that I've made for my classes. So without further ado, let's get going. All right. Never did explain the differences between plant and animal cells. Now, you should have picked this up through your book, and by looking at the, the organelles that you'd find in a plant and the ones you'd find in an animal cell, but I never went over this directly, so here you go. There's three things that plant cells have, and then there's one thing that's only found in animal cells, and here they are in this chart. So let's add some extras to this. Okay, number one, the cell wall. This is the outer part of the cell. And it's going to be made out of cellulose. Number two are chloroplast. Actually, let me draw this over here. So cell wall, chloroplast are those things right here. So I'm going to put a CP for chloroplast. Okay, this is the site of photosynthesis. Okay, and we're going to cover our next chapter, our next series of screencasts. We're going to cover all the details about photosynthesis that you would like to know. Uh, the third thing that are only found in plant cells is a large central vacuole, and this is used mainly to store water. Water is one of the components for um, photosynthesis, so it needs to, it's kind of got a big water tank for that. Okay, so as you can see here, cell wall, chloroplast, and a central vacuole. Those are found only in plant cells. Now, in animal cells, you're going to find centrioles, and these are the things that look like Twizzlers. And it's these guys right here. And these are used to make what's called the spindle during cell division. Oh, here we go. During cell division, which will be chapter 10 for us, and we're going to have a series of screencasts on those. Okay? So that's what's the difference between plants and animal cells. Okay, and another thing that I forgot to cover were aquaporins. Aquaporins are special transport proteins that we find inside a plant cell, or I'm sorry, inside a cell membrane. And what their job is, they're going to let water go through. So let's go right here. But they don't let ions come through. And the real important part is this area right in here. All right, this positively charged thing here is going to, it's going to stop negative ions and it's going to repel positive ions. So they're going to go through different mechanisms, typically these uh, ion pumps through active transport and all that other kind of stuff. But water, with it being partially positive and partially negative, you see how it can orientate itself through here? So only water can get through. So remember, in an aquaporin, only water gets through. Oops, let me spell this right. Okay, just remember this. Aqua refers to water, and pour means like a pour. Think of like a nuclear envelope. So always remember this. Aquaporins let water pour into the cell. But they can go inside and out too, all right? So, but this, this charged part of the center can help pull the water through, but it's going to repel ions, all right? So let's get rid of that one. And then finally, cell junctions. Now, this is just a freshman biology class. We're not going to go over the ultimate details of these cell junctions. But the thing that you want to remember is multicellular creatures have to make sure that their cells can stay glued to each other. And then these cell junctions are not only going to be able to do that, but they also need to allow the cell to be able to communicate with each other. So cell junctions come in one, two, three, four, five different flavors. The ones that kind of seal them together or tie them together are tight junctions and really what these do they form a, kind of a waterproof seal okay you're not going to let molecules get between them okay adherins these are going to help tie cells together and the same thing with desmosomes they're going to tie them together now a gap junction is a little special 
kind of think of it like a skyway between two buildings is that you can walk through this skyway or this gap junction to get from one cell to another. And then uh, a hemidesmosome just basically anchors it to the basal lam lamina. Uh, think of it like you're tying your house down to the foundation because you don't want the cell layer to peel away so quick. All right, so tight junctions, adherent desmosomes, and hemidesmosomes really tie the cells together, and a gap junction allows materials to move from one cell to another. That's all there is to it. Very short video, just a few of the things that I forgot to add in our previous ones. So remember, you got a test coming up this week, so make sure you study. Until next time, see you on the flip side for episode 101. Woohoo!